week 17 was definitely wild. It was amazing and we have to go over it, man. I mean, it's not the last week of the season. I mean, this is the first time week 17 isn't the last one. And let's start off by talking about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I mean, they barely survived in MetLife, winning it 28 to 24 in an entertaining super crazy game where the Jets at one point led 24 to 10 late in that fourth quarter. And the Jets had fourth and two at the Buccaneers seven yard line up 24 to 20 with a chance to put it away and they couldn't. It was such a bad play call. QB sneak by Zach Wilson, he didn't get it. But Zach Wilson still did play well. 234 yards and a touchdown. And they kept up with the champs, how about that? But Brady always finds a way to win like he does. And they got it done on a nine play, 93 yard drive that ended up with a 33 yard touchdown pass to Cyril Grayson with 15 seconds left. Tom Brady doing what he does. And targeting those guys that you normally don't see do much. And Brady was great. I mean, 400 yards, three touchdowns, had a first quarter interception with without Godwin, without Fournette, without Rojo. Gronkowski had a big game, but I think the injuries might be catching up to this team at some point. They really weren't dominant at all against the Jets. But really, the main story about it was Antonio Brown, who quit halfway through the game, seemingly. And NFL insider Jay Glazer reported that Bruce Arians wanted Antonio Brown to come back into the game, but Antonio was like, no, I can't. He refused. He thought he was injured even though he already played like in the game and he already had three catches. But anyway, uh, he just quit. I feel like he's mental. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I think he needs help. But either way, he ripped his jersey off. He threw his pads, gloves, shirt, shoulder pads, you know, just went shirtless and he left the stadium and, you know, in a styling, stylish fashion, I guess you would say. But crazy because he was spotted the next day at a Nets game, courtside. So... The guy's crazy, but either way, uh, Buccaneers squeak by, barely. And then the Rams, how about them? They stay alive. They won 20-19. The Rams are down 16-7. to They made a comeback in a hostile environment uh, in Baltimore where the Ravens always play well. Stafford threw another pick six, threw two interceptions. But the Rams scored 13 in the fourth quarter and a huge fourth down conversion with the game on the line. Down 19-14 with a minute eight left. Odell Beckham Jr. OBJ came up huge in the win. Caught that fourth down pass and the very next play caught the game winning touchdown pass. And the Rams really didn't dominate either. And honestly, I'm not really fully convinced by this Rams offense right now. Or Matt Stafford. I mean, he threw for 300 yards, but still two interceptions. Cooper Cup looking as strong as ever for MVP right now. Six catches for 95 yards and a touchdown. And for the Ravens, I mean, it's been a rough stretch. How about that? All their COVID cases and the amount of close losses that they've taken over the past couple of weeks. Heartbreaking. Um, their playoff hopes are pretty much dashed at the moment right now. Tyler Hundley wasn't too great either. And now the Cardinals versus the Cowboys and the Cowboys lost 25 to 22. I honestly don't really know what to make of the Cowboys at this point. They haven't really beaten any great teams. Uh, they beat the Patriots, but that was early in the season. They, they beat the Chargers. I mean, Chargers lost to these Texans, so I don't really know what to make of them. And the other wins for the Cowboys are two times against the Giants, two times against Washington, the Falcons, the Vikings, the Eagles, the Saints, and the Panthers. Those are not good teams at all. I just don't know what to make of them. They played sloppy in the first half. The penalties killed them. They had a missed field goal, no running game, some bad throws by Dak Prescott, and they were down 22-7 to going into that fourth quarter where they scored 15 points. And I, I predicted the Cowboys would come back and win the game, but they didn't. There was a forced fumble at the end, forced by the Cowboys' defense, but they couldn't review because of their own mistakes. They burned a timeout earlier. Trevon Diggs, he had... Uh, issues let's say just guarding AJ Green and they just have to come out stronger that this was an issue last season too but really hats off to the Cardinals shorthanded without James Conner we know without JJ Watt without DeAndre Hopkins the offense was just so much better they didn't turn the ball over that was really the key two out of two on fourth down and that fake punt, I think, really shifted the momentum for the game. It was 3-0 at the time. And then allowed them to score that key touchdown to Antoine Wesley to make it 10-0. And they had the catch of the year on that fake punt to Jonathan Ward. One-handed, David Tyree-esque. And Antoine Wesley, I mean, he stepped up big. Four catches for 30 yards and two touchdowns. And Kyler's legs, I think, were such a key in this game. He has to use them more because... It gives the defenses nightmares, honestly. They just can't stop him. He's too fast. And defensively, the Cowboys made 
some mistakes. Offensively, they made mistakes. Buda Baker and that defense held the number one offense in the NFL to seven points through three quarters, and there was a big turnover by Dak Prescott that Isaiah Simmons forced. So it was a much-needed win for the Cardinals. Great, great win for them. And uh, honestly, Cowboys, Cardinals looking like a lock for the wild card weekend. And now, the really one of the biggest surprises of the weekend were the card were the Colts. I mean, they lost to the Raiders at home. The Raiders won 23 to 20 on a game-winning field goal by Daniel Carlson. Winston even passed for positive yards in that first quarter. He had a lucky touchdown to T.Y. Hilton, which is a stroke of luck. He only threw for 150 yards. He came through when they needed to on that field goal, but. He, he's just inconsistent. He's missing too many throws. This is what we're worried about with the Colts. Ken Carson wins deliver when he needs to. And Jonathan Taylor should have way more than 20 carries in that game. And um, they were up 17-13 going into the fourth quarter. But the defense just could not get a stop on the Raiders. I mean, they couldn't get a stop down the stretch. And the Colts have dropped to number six seed. And they can clinch the playoff berth with a win over the Jags next week. The Raiders, let me tell you something. They just don't give up, man. I mean, they're a tough team. Hey, they, they just don't go away. I mean, they looked dead in the water a few weeks ago against Kansas City at 6-7. and seven. Now 8-7 and seven with a chance to make the playoffs win or in next week on Sunday night. And Hunter Renfro has come up huge for Derek Carr in this offense. So is Zay Jones. And they just keep hanging in there, man. They're just hanging in there. And then the probably the game of the week where the Cincinnati Bengals had the upset of the week beating the Kansas City Chiefs at home 38-31. The Chiefs offense played well in that first half putting up 28 points and the Chiefs led by 11 at the half but I mean their stats are pretty good too. Patrick Mahomes 74% completion for 260 yards and two touchdowns. Tyreek Hill was bottled up pretty well by the Bengals. I'll give them credit for that. Kelsey only had five catches and they struggled in the second half as the Bengals just piled it on. Bengals outscored the Chiefs 17-3 in the second half. Daryl Williams is really good for the Chiefs without Clyde Edwards-Alaire. He had two touchdowns, but honestly, it was the Jamar Chase show uh, on Sunday. He broke the rookie record for most receiving yards, held by his fellow LSU Tiger, Justin Jefferson. And Jamar Chase's numbers just are eye-popping. 11 catches. 262 yards, three touchdowns, including a 69-yard bomb and a 79-yard monster TD. But the one that really stood out to me that really changed this game was the pass on third and 25. It was in the fourth quarter. The Bengals were down, um, and they were down by four, I think, at the moment. And then the Chiefs sent an all-out blitz by Spags, and they shouldn't have. It left Jamar Chase one-on-one, -on -one, and uh, they, they were just too aggressive. You can't do that on third and 25. But I'm confident the Chiefs will learn from this. Joe Burrow was amazing, 450 yards after last week's 525 yards. The Bengals are here, man. And they're here to play the AFC North champions. And they're going to make some noise in the playoffs. And then the Titans are now the number one seed in the AFC. Who would have thought that was possible? I mean, the Chiefs lost and the Titans smoked the Dolphins 34-3, to in which I had the Dolphins winning. I, my picks sucked last week, to be honest. And... Their running game was dominant, almost 200 yards rushing with Deontay Foreman and the rest of them. And play action to Tannehill. I mean, it, they, the Titans just become unbeatable when the running game starts to get going. It's lethal. And then Derrick Henry is coming back. So, I mean, you look out for Tennessee tough right now. And they beat a good Dolphins team. It, it, they beat a good team. So, Titans, I mean, watch out for them. And then the Eagles, they continue to win off a three-game win streak. They clinched the playoff berth last week. Amazing for them. And they beat the Washington football team 20-16 to in a hard-fought game where they were down 16-7 to at the half. And then finally, last night, Monday night, emotional night. Big Ben, Ben Roethlisberger, the Steelers quarterback for so long. It was his final game in Pittsburgh at Heinz Field. Very emotional for him. He played tough. It was a fitting ending for him. Um, as a Steeler at home, beating the Browns 26 to 14, where he was 24 out of 46 for 123 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. And he played okay in the first half, but Najee Harris led the way, 188 yards and two touchdowns for Najee. But Ben bids farewell to Pittsburgh, and uh, something to see for Big Ben, first battle Hall of Famer for sure. So. Hope you guys enjoyed my week 17 recap and reaction. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, enable notifications, comment in the comment sec section what your favorite moment of week 17 was, and I'll see you in the next video.